military family. And this is the flag that the Honor Guard gave us when my father passed away and was buried in 1989. In fact, I was born on a horse cavalry post. And yes, they really did still have horses. In those days in the pre-war army, military post issued yearbooks. They're sort of like your high school yearbook today. And I still have the yearbook from Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia in 1940, the year I was born. My father went off to the Second World War when I was still a toddler. He came back with a scrapbook, the European Theater of Operations, and the Bronze Star, the Army's third highest decoration. He also brought back with him memories that he chose not to share with his family or, or maybe really couldn't share with his family. We moved around a lot after the war. One of my earliest memories is either riding or sleeping in the back of an old Chevrolet sedan. We went from Georgia to Colorado, from Colorado to Mississippi, from Mississippi back to Colorado and the Pacific Northwest. And we finally ended up um, in Florida when my father retired, all these long road trips. Now, when we traveled in the great American Southwest, my mom and dad went through a curious ritual. When we stopped at a motel for the night, my mom, who was a beautiful white woman of Russian descent, always went in to book the room. Now, when we were kids, we were told the reason for this was that she wanted to be sure that the sheets were clean and the room was okay for us. So my father, this decorated serving military officer, stayed out in the car with us. Later on, we found out the real reason for this. My father had brown skin and he spoke with a distinct Latino accent. He'd gone into that hotel trying to rent a room with the white woman and kids. He would have been considered a Mexican. And the best he could have hoped for, the best he could have hoped for would have been to throw out, be thrown out of that room. And the worst is unthinkable. One of the ironies of this story is that my father was not Mexican. Gregorio? Adan Idias was born in the Canary Islands, a province of Spain. His family was desperately poor, and he fled home, left home, when he was 12 years old. He ultimately ended up in the United States, where he joined the Horse Cavalry and spent the next 30 years of his life serving his country. But this this is not just a negative story about America's professed ideals and how they might not have been realized in Gregorio Diaz's life. It's also a story of grit, of overcoming the negative and the obstacles. Because whatever else my father was, and he was a man of many moods and attitudes, he had cojones, balls. Yes. He suffered discrimination because of his noticeable accent and the hue of his skin, but he also had grit. And in the end, he built a life for himself and for his family in this new country. After he retired from the military, he went to college and he graduated from Florida Southern College in the same month and the same year that I graduated from Lakeland Senior High School. And I still have those diplomas. Today, when my family, my father's son, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren get together, we like to take a family picture. And we say of ourselves, we are the world.